Hi friends and welcome to this week's episode. It's been a little while since we've talked about bladder issues and this is such a huge thing for women, not only menopausal women, but any of us, especially after childbirth. But I think it's worth talking about again. And today I especially want to talk about non-surgical ways to treat this because for sure, surgery is an option, but there are non-surgical ways that can be really helpful. And if we can avoid surgery, that's always great in my opinion. So first of all, let me talk about the main types of urine leakage that we experience as women. There are many types, uh, but I'm gonna loosely just talk about the two main types. The first one is called stress urinary incontinence. We call it SUI in the business, and that's almost always associated with childbirth. What happens when we put a baby through the vagina, obviously the muscular supports of the vagina get stretched, and I always think about the vagina like a room. The ceiling supports the bladder on top that's closer to our tummy, and the floor supports the rectum. So when we have a baby, those muscles get stretched and often get pulled apart. So there literally can be a gap in the ceiling and a gap in the floor. We're, we're talking about the ceiling today, which is the side that holds up the bladder. So if you're sitting in a room like the room that I'm in, we want the ceiling to look like the ceiling of this room strong, supportive, so that if the bladder were sitting on the other side of the ceiling, it would not fall through. But what happens when we have stress incontinence is frequently the ceiling has a sag in it. So the bladder's falling through the ceiling just because those muscles are not as strong as they used to be. So then when we cough, sneeze, exercise, laugh, jump, all of those things that increase our abdominal pressure, we're pushing the bladder down even further. So that's where the word stress came from. We're stressing those muscles. So frequently we're fine walking around. In severe cases, it can even be just walking around can cause leakage of urine. But in most cases, it's when we jump, cough, sneeze, exercise, bladders push down and it bypasses its ability to hold urine and we leak a little bit of urine. So most frequently it's just a little squirt of urine. It's not emptying the whole bladder. That would usually be a different problem. But leaking a little bit of urine whenever we cough, sneeze, exercise, that's a big problem. It's not just a small thing. I've actually experienced it myself. I'll tell a little bit more about that later in this video. I was able to correct mine without surgery. Now there's nothing wrong with surgery. I was actually <laughs> Now, there's nothing wrong with surgery. I was actually scheduled to have the surgery and decided to do something non-surgical instead. And thank goodness now I don't need to have it done, but we do want to fix it. I think that's just not an acceptable problem. What often happens is we become socially isolated. We become embarrassed to do certain activities. We might not do those things that we know are good for us, like even going to the gym, jumping, exercising. What I was doing was only running in black shorts because I knew I was going to leak, it changed my behavior. So if you're in a place where you're changing your behavior because you're worried about urine leakage, it's something to think about. It's time to fix it. So let's talk about some of the ways that we do correct stress incontinence. All of these methods are some version of making the ceiling stronger. So we wanna make that ceiling stronger and we can certainly do that with surgery. So that would be one way. The muscles can literally be sewn together or even some synthetic material, and there's nothing wrong with this, synthetic material that we call a sling. It's about the size of my pinky finger. If you do have a sling, it's placed right underneath the middle of the urethra, which is the tube that goes from the bladder to the outside world. I'm gonna show you all this on my little model in a minute. So a minor surgery like a sling, or even tightening those muscles, pulling them together, that will fix it. Now that's a day surgery, you go home the same day, you know, all of these things have potential complications. We have to go to sleep. If you have a sling, even though it's very, very safe, and that mesh is very, very safe. I was about to have that surgery myself. So if you've had that done or if you're considering it, it's a fantastic solution. Nothing wrong with it. But we always want to avoid surgery if we can. So starting at the lowest level of things that you can even do at home by yourself, we start by just generating force with those muscles ourselves. So most of us have done what we call Kegel exercises, which is voluntarily tightening those muscles. And just like lifting weights anywhere, we can help create a more supportive bottom and top. We can actually contract the muscles throughout the pelvic floor to help support the bladder, as well as help support the rectum and give a little bit more tone within a course. So all of those good things. But 
Kegel exercises are hard to do. <laughs> it's really difficult to do enough of them to make a difference. And frankly, if there's actually a gap in those muscles, it's very difficult to do those exercises at all. But starting with pelvic physical therapy, you can see a pelvic physical therapist. I've actually done that myself. She can assess what's going on with your muscles and then set up a program for you to get on. And that's a great idea. So we'll put that on the list. If you come to see us in the office, we teach you how to do Kegels. We kind of do a version of a pelvic PT visit and set up a program to see if that will help. And you can also use electrical stimulation to do those Kegel exercises for you. So I am a huge fan of this technology since I had it done myself. It's called the Msella chair, E-M-S-E-L-L-A. So um, the Msella chair I'll show you later on in the video is a device that you sit on and it actually does those Kegel exercises for you. You can do way more than you could possibly do on your own because your muscles don't reach fatigue. So electrical stimulation of muscles is a really great way to get your pelvic PT in. And it does work better than doing them on your own because Frankly, you could never do that many. So that's one option, some form of pelvic physical therapy, whether you're doing it yourself or using electrical stimulation. And then we can also do various things to increase the collagen on the anterior vaginal wall. There are even products, now I don't actually use these because anytime you're injecting foreign substances, there are a variety of risks that we start getting into, but you can have different substances injected into the anterior vaginal wall to give it more strength. That's an option. Now we also can do laser, which creates more collagen, as well as using platelet-rich plasma. So we talked a little bit about that last time in the video about vaginal dryness and pain. So vaginal laser actually has this side effect, even though it's designed for improving moisture, it actually can also improve bladder health, which is kind of a cool side effect. So don't forget about that option. And then of course, last we're talking about surgery, some kind of surgery to support that anterior vaginal wall with or without mesh. So those are broadly the treatments that we're looking at when somebody's complaining of stress incontinence. And then also weight loss, of course, just generally being fit, using your muscles throughout your body, all of those things help. But absolutely, I would not be in the camp that just says, well, that's just a normal thing that happens with age or childbirth and put up with it. How about don't put up with it? It's not gonna get better with age if you don't do something to correct it. The younger that you are, the better, because our muscles are stronger. And then I did wanna mention just the other broad category of incontinence, which is very common that we call urge incontinence. So that one's a little bit different. It's actually the bladder muscle itself contracting before it's supposed to. So when our bladder was young and healthy, it would get full, it's like a big tense balloon, it's a really thick muscle, and then it would send a signal to our brain. We would walk to the bathroom, sit down, and then the bladder would contract at the appropriate time, and that's fantastic. Well, what happens sometimes as we get older is as soon as we have a signal to go to the bathroom, like maybe you've got your key in the door, trying to undo the tie of your pants in my case, or undo your button, or if you hear water running, anything that triggers your brain to think about urinating, the bladder starts contracting a little bit. And so we have this unbearable desire to pee and then sometimes leak a little bit. So not uncommonly, we'll be putting our keys in the door and then we're running to the bathroom all the while just trickling a little bit of urine. And so that one's a little bit different because it's not caused by the position of the bladder falling through the ceiling. It's caused by the bladder muscle itself being irritable. So that can be treated with behavioral management. So for example, I have a little bit of this too. I just have to remember to go to the bathroom more frequently and just put it on my schedule, not waiting till I really need to go. There are also bladder irritants, which unfortunately are all the things we love, like caffeine and alcohol and acidic things like orange juice. So you might find there are specific things that irritate your bladder and we remove those from your diet. And then the final step, which personally I rarely get to with our patients, is putting someone on a bladder relaxing medication. The downside of those is they do have some side effects, particularly dry mouth, dry eyes, sometimes abdominal pain. And you have to take it every day for a problem that only occurs occasionally. So if we can avoid medication, that's great. So urge incontinence, we're gonna treat mostly with behavioral management, including dietary changes hopefully not medicine. But regarding the anatomic changes with stress incontinence, I promised I would show you my little model. Here she is. 
this, this little person's very small, but side on, here's the vagina, got my finger in the vagina. The bladder is right on top here. Here's the bladder, pubic bone on top. So this is if you cut through the middle. So in this case, the bladder is really well supported. You can see it's sitting up high. When we have stress incontinence, this support is not as strong. And so the bladder is actually sitting down lower. If you look in the vagina, you can actually see a bulge. And you may be able to feel it if you have this yourself, that the bladder is actually bulging down into the vagina. So we want to make that ceiling stronger. And if you have a sling, this is the urethra, this little tube that carries the urine from the bladder to the outside world. That support is put right underneath the mid urethra and it's literally just the size of my pinky finger. So nothing wrong with that, but we're going to try to treat leakage without surgery if we can. So let me show you a little bit more about the M. Stella chair because this is such a remarkable invention and it prevented me from getting surgery. So I hope it can prevent you from getting surgery too. Hi ladies, so we were talking about stress incontinence and I was showing you this little model uh, from the previous video. Uh, so I wanna show you a little bit about this amazing Amsella chair. So this chair is just a way of doing Kegel exercises, which is tightening the pelvic floor muscles without you having to do anything. Because those of you who've tried doing Kegel exercises, it's quite difficult to do them and it's quite difficult to remember to do them. I personally was put on a pelvic physical therapy course, which was fantastic, but I think I failed it within the first three days just because I couldn't remember to do it. So this is just another option, which uses an electrical source underneath the chair. So we'll show how it works in a moment. You sit on the chair in your clothes and then the machine contracts the muscles for you. So the full series treatment is 30 minutes. So you would sit on the chair for 30 minutes. As you're doing so, we turn the dial up so we get it to contract as much as you can tolerate. Each time you do it, you'll find you'll be able to do it a little bit more than the time before because your muscles get stronger. So the treatment series ideally is six 30 minute treatments. Now you can read a book while you're sitting there, you're in your clothes, it's not painful. Some patients actually find it quite pleasurable. It's quite a nice sensation. So six treatments about a week apart. So it is a bit of a commitment to come in every week, but it can be an alternative to surgery. And my personal story is that I was about to have surgery to treat my stress incontinence. And because of COVID, I wasn't able to have the surgery. So I did this instead. I thought it would just be temporary. Now it's three and a half years later and I don't need the surgery. So it truly can be an alternative to surgery for many, many patients who have stress incontinence, along with hormone replacement and other things that we talked to you about as well, like even weight loss. But I'm gonna show you how it works. I'm gonna sit on it in a moment and I'll tell you how it feels. Okay, so I'm sitting on the chair. We're just starting it up and you'll be able to hear the sound of that energy source. Initially, it feels like a little tickle. So my job as the patient is to kind of wiggle my pelvis so that the energy source is going right up into those pelvic floor muscles. So I'm right in the right spot. You can sort of hear it coming in waves. And she's turning it up as much as I can tolerate. So having done this before, ooh, yeah, that feels, it feels good. We can definitely feel those muscles contracting. So you can imagine doing this for 30 minutes. That is way more than you could possibly do on your own. So um, it's not an unpleasant sensation at all. It's actually, it feels like, ooh. Ooh. Yeah, so um, you can imagine if I sat here, I could read a book for 30 minutes. And if I were doing Kegels on my own, I could maybe do 10, maybe two minutes, and then my muscles would fail. So lactic acid builds up, and then you simply are not able to contract anymore. When our muscles are being stimulated this way with an external energy source, we don't have lactic acid build up. So you could really sit on it all day. Uh, luckily, you don't have to do that. Only 30 minutes is necessary. but. With electrical stimulation, we don't uh, go into muscle failure because our muscles are not being contracted with our own will, but with the electrical stimulus. So this is a fantastic way to avoid surgery for stress incontinence. I'm solid chair, six treatments, Ooh, 30 minutes each. And hopefully you can avoid surgery and get rid of that really annoying stress incontinence. And right now, we're actually offering this for a special price. So check that out as well on our website. Try to talk while you're having this done. Uh, but six treatments, uh, $1,200, so $200 a treatment, which is way cheaper than having surgery. 
and no downtime. So give us a call, a link below. We'd love to see you. When you come in for a consultation to see if this is a good idea for you, of course we do a physical exam, make sure that it is appropriate for you. Some patients do need surgery. Hopefully you're not in that category. In that case, this could be a great option. And then let's say you come in for your consultation, you can just sit on it and give it a try and see how it feels. And then make a decision from there. So we do keep this machine in our Ben's office. So if you usually go to Tanglewood, you would want to come to Ben's for this particular visit. And we can't wait to see you here.